Someone in the comments asked me to create a video on OTT platform system design. So here is a video on Netflix system design. So let's start with the basic flow. So suppose this is a user. Now the user when it first makes a call, the call would first go through some gateway and behind this gateway there will be the actual Netflix servers and behind this will be the database. In each component there are a lot of different things. Generally in what I have seen in a lot of articles and a lot of videos, people just cover about the part, this part, like how is the Netflix service, servers are arranged, how are the calls going in, but no one actually talks about what is going on in this part, what is going on in this part, there are actually a lot of things which are going on in these parts itself. So in this first video, we're just going to talk about this user to gateway part, like when you first log in what happens after login what happens when you log in what happens we'll see everything so when we first log in we log in with suppose a username a password now you when you first log in now let's consider netflix art architecture as a con combination of a lot of microservices we'll go in detail in each microservice in, in upcoming videos but let's for now suppose there is a lot of microservices and microservice to be honest, it's just nothing, just a simple small service, which is doing only a one particular thing, not many things. And it's not a monolith. So a fancy name microservice, it's just a service which is doing some function. So let's suppose that this is a login service. Now only let's first consider this login service, which will, we will consider. And we have this API gateway. Now what is API gateway? Now, if this, there are different microservices here. There will be a lot of APIs. For example, there will be one login for this. There will be something called fetch or query something called get next frame. So there are a lot of APIs. So how instead of providing all this information to the client to which API to call, we put an API gateway in between and this API gateway then routes these to different places. Now taking that. Uh, example specifically for Netflix, they use something called Zulu for this API gateway. Now they have upgraded to Zulu 2. Now in one of the comments, I also got an, uh, a question like how do these API gateways work and all that, all that thing. So we'll go about that in some other video. But for now, let's just consider that there is an API gateway. Why we call it a gateway? Because there are many, many different APIs which are calling. The person makes a call to this API gateway for a particular API and this API gateway then routes it to the, the required microservice, which is there. Now in login, there are a lot of many nuances involved. For example, when you log in, you stay logged in for a lot of time. So how will this Netflix know that you are the user who logged in the first time? what happens when you actually log in. So what happens when you actually log in? So you give your username password and along with that Netflix also takes the device. For example, your device can be a TV, mobile, laptop. All of these have a particular device ID. So it takes the device ID also and it takes the password username password. Now API gateway receives these. It then sends it to the login service. The login service then validates these credentials on the base of database that you are a valid user, valid member, and then it return back some cookies. Now this cookies is one type of token. There can be multiple types of token for different types of devices. For example, TV may use some other token, let's say token one, uh, some mobile might be a very old mobile or a TV might be a very old TV. So let's say token two. So there can be multiple token. So this service de determines what, what type of token to be returned. So the, this uh, cookies is sent to this API gateway and then it is then sent back to the user. Now when the user again opens Netflix, it will just send in the cookies which it has received and this API gateway, what it will do, it will decrypt these cookies because all of this is happening in encrypted form. So login service is sending cookies in an encrypted form. Then API gateway is sending back the cookies in an encrypted form and the user stores it in the browser or whatever a way of storing cookies in that device. Now the user, when it sent back the cookies, the API gateway, what it will do, it will take these cookies. It will first decrypt it to see that this is a valid user 
for this there is a service called a key management service so what, what this key management service does is it takes in the cookies or the token it decrypts it and determines the entity of the user now what is the entity of the user entity of the user is nothing but its user id its device id and there can be other information which is stored now it it checks that it is a valid user only then this call is then forwarded to the netflix server now when this call goes further ahead the cookies are passed but now these are also again encrypted because any calls between the services we cannot pass as decrypted because there is a possibility of security attack here these cookies can be decrypted at and if if these are sent decrypted anyone can use these cookies to do anything for that user so these are encrypted this login service then again decrypts it using the kms and then does whatever entity management it then fetches the recommendations or whatever browser the first home page what it has to display on the basis of this entity information now fetching the recommendation and all that it won't be done by just the login service there might be some other service which is doing this so the decryption is happening at this point also so you would notice here that the decryption is happening at multiple points the login service is decrypting this another service is decrypting api gateway is decrypting and netflix has daily let's suppose 2 to 3 million users so for 2 to 3 million users every time that they open netflix or even a refresh page it will call so many calls which are happening this will make just the loading of the home page very very slow and this also introduces one more security threat that still these cookies are passed even though they are encrypted but it is being passed down from the user till the backend complete backend so at any point if it some some service by mistake logs it into the logs then there can be logs injection to actually get this data so this is quite a messy approach and netflix had to go away with it so what is a better approach to manage this login thing now let's see that so let's see the older architecture first user kms api gateway microservices database this is calling kms this service is calling kms this service is calling kms cookies are being transferred from the user to this gateway being transferred to this service this service again then transferred to this service so there are these cookies are transferring now simply as you see it you will realize that we can move all this like why are we actually using these cookies we are using these cookies to get the user entity which is the important thing for any service to operate or do any job so you will think the basic approach that will come to our mind is why not decrypt it at the gateway itself and just pass the user entity itself so that this decryption has doesn't have to happen again and again and maybe we can protect this user entity in some way so that we can pass it over the network from one service to another also so that's what they did so what happens is there is a user cookies and there's a gateway and now here we have a set of token management services so for each type of token we have different services so this can be anything to like we talked about token 1 token 2 and cookies so when these are passed this gateway will get these it will make a call to these services on the basis of the type of token it has it will decrypt it and create something called a user entity now this user entity document let's call it passport now this passport what it will do it will actually contain user entries like user id etc device things and multiple things like that now this passport can be in multiple forms uh, netflix uses protobuf format you can use a pojo which is a plain old java object simply it is nothing but you can assume a kind of a, if you are using c++ a structure or a, even a class which has member variables like user id it has device id and this might be complete user itself and this user then there is another class of user netflix uses protobuf because this library handles serialization deserialization automatically so they don't have to actually define functions uh, which they would have to do if they used a normal class or a pojo now what will this do that the gateway will get the cookies it will see that the cookies are expired or not 
it is also possible that the cookies are expired or not if the cookies are not expired it will decrypt it using the KMS get the user entity create a passport and send this passport to the other services now this passport is also encrypted using HMAC if you don't know what HMAC is HMAC is a way to actually encrypt your data the point is you would argue that we were encrypting at this point also and we were call calling a KMS but the major point is that decryption was happening here the main the issue was not the decryption part issue was calling this KMS service to actually get the user entity again and again so we are trying to prevent that call and prevent this call happening multiple times in this uh, complete workflow so the microservices will get this passport they will decrypt it and use it for whatever means they want to whatever database uh, they have a good thing is that when they return the response with the passport they can attach an action this action can be anything like display home page or play a movie like whatever can be the responses the gateway will get the passport with the action in it so what happens is like the login service specifically will use this passport to actually see that the user is an actual member has an active subscription and then it will give it back with an action to display the home page now this gateway will get the passport back with this action to display the home page and then it will this gateway will pass this to the home page service with this passport action it will create the whatever page which has to be displayed send back the home page and finally the user will get the home page response so in this point no other service has to care about managing tokens like cookies they are just concerned with this internal passport thing which the, it is not visible to the user and the user is just concerned with the cookies which is gets directly from these services microservices which are just made for managing tokens and identity of the user now if the cookies expired this gateway will make a call to this service to regenerate a cookie for a particular user and then send this user the cookie back so everything related to tokens is happening here and then the main logic is in the back end so this is how a login works and in login also you can see that there are a lot of these things which are happening now uh, we talked about the encryption so most of the times when you visit netflix.com it is HTTPS that means that it is a secured connection what this means that there you are also getting TLS which is transport layer security so what this basically means is your request is encrypted and is secured when you make this call so SSL termination will happen on the gateway it will use it to actually fetch the your entity and then pass it to the internal services now this SSL termination could have happened even at the service level the gateway would have just taken taken this and passed it to the service but in this use case we specifically want this to happen at the gateway itself because we want to extract some information so when you create a secured connection your secured connection is created with this gateway and you're not bothered about the backend what it is happening you will just get the response on the basis of the secure connection you have maintained with this gateway now how is a secure connection maintained I have talked about how a connection is maintained in my previous videos which is a TCP connection and how a handshake happens so you can refer to the system design basics video which I have created to know about how the connection in happens now this was all about how login happens now the user has logged in now the user can see the recommendations now in the next videos we will see how the backend works to actually give us the recommendations or the home page rendering which happens and in the future videos then we'll talk about how actually the streaming happens like when the user clicks how the streams happen and what happens in the backend when the streaming is happening so this series is just to make sure that if you try to make your own netflix someday you know these things so the first basic thing that you will need to take care of is authentication and authorization and this is the first thing which is the login see you in the next one